can say how many RICO stations there are in the world. 10,000? 100,000? And most of them look like this. Because they were molded in four colors, most were assembled and left unpainted. That's how I found mine at a train show. It was only $23, but after a while, I realized that it was just too big for me or my layout. In an earlier video, I showed how I took it apart and shortened the length. That actually went pretty smoothly, and if I ever buy another Rico station that's unassembled, I'll make it smaller in the same way. I also added a few strips of sheet plastic to update the roof details and to fill in a few gaps between roof sections. A loading platform was added from a spare kit. Modeler's putty was used to fill in a few imperfections, and then it was ready for paint. Now that the gaps in the roof have been filled, I'll paint the inside of the building in flat black. Those two things should allow me to add interior LED lighting later on, without the light peeking through or causing the walls to glow. After masking the windows from the inside, I can spray the doors and window frames from the outside in their new color. My Rico station is missing one of the four brackets that support the roof. At first, I was happy with just the one side having two. But then, later on, I realized how easy it would be to make a replacement. The two corners were masked off before I sprayed the doors and windows. I guess I knew that I'd be making a replacement bracket, and leaving the two ends unpainted would allow for cementing the missing pieces. My station was originally going to have gray siding and white window frames for a nautical New England sort of look. But then the white paint just started to look so good on everything. I even debated doing the roof in white to give the whole building an architectural model kind of vibe. It would look awesome by itself, but it wouldn't match the new trend towards realism with my layout. A while ago, I bought a few little wall lamps, and I think this is the perfect time to use them. I drilled a small pilot hole first, and then the larger one. When I'm finished with painting, 
there's a tiny threaded nut that goes on from the inside, which will hold it in the right position. If I had a time machine, I'd go back and tell myself to stop right here. Just add the lighting, maybe some clear plastic for windows, and be done with it. But I don't have a time machine, so in the next video you'll get to see how I weathered this plastic model with dry brushing and diluted black washes that were supposed to bring out details and add character. I apologize in advance. So until next time, this has been Bob's Workshop. Take care.